Welcome back to Worth Weekly News. This week there was a leak list coming out, so be sure to hit that subscribe button. Now this leak list didn't actually say exact vehicles, just the type of vehicle. I'm wondering if this has something to do with maybe Gaijin decided to strengthen their security and making sure there's less leaks. But that's unimportant. What is important, this comes from the VK blogs, and in it, it claims that there's going to be a new mechanic, 7th rank for helicopters, the US is going to get a fighter and a light cruiser, the USSR is going to get a fighter, an amphibious tank, and a light cruiser, the British are going to get two fighters, the Japanese are going to get a self-propelled gun and a heavy cruiser, the Germans are going to get a a heavy cruiser and a helicopter, Italy is going to get a medium tank, a spag, two fighters and two interceptors, and France is going to get a medium tank and a helicopter. Ending with important preliminary technique, which I think is a mistranslation of something, and dev soon. So let's go over the dev blogs that came out this week, and at the end, tally on how correct this supposed leak is. Now this leak list came out on August 24th, so any dev blog prior to that date, we're going to have to not count as evidence, although the further ones, we can. Starting off with the new mechanic, you've probably heard about it, night vision, as well as infrared and all that cool stuff. The way you'll get it is it will be available for research as a module on whatever vehicle history had it. Typically these kind of things started showing up right after World War II. I believe the first Russian tank to have night vision was the T-54. Perhaps there were some prior prototypes. And I'm not so sure about Western forces, but I assume it's around the similar time. Although I'm wondering how far Gaijin is going to go back, because there was some very early night vision devices on Second World War vehicles. And currently in game, the Panther 2 has a setup for night vision modeled onto it. Although, for some reason, it will get its night vision implemented at a later time. What I'm also curious about is some of the vehicles from a later date that are earlier in the tree, for example the ASU-85 and PT-76, I am pretty sure they had infrared searchlights on them. So this begs the question, is, is night vision going to improve performance for vehicles enough to the point where they should get a battle rating increase. I don't know too much about the science behind infrared, however I do know, I've read, that many infrared devices can actually see through smoke. If the PT-76 can look through its own smoke cloud that it puts up and snipe Tiger 1s with heat FS, I would argue that it should have a battle rating increase. And I would extend that to the Object 120, which has a big old red headlight on it, which I assume is a IR searchlight. If that thing was able to use infrared and shoot APFSDS across the map onto Tiger 2s, I'm not so sure how balanced the game would be. However, in a recent Q&A, Gaijin had admitted that if two vehicles have the same battle rating, it doesn't mean that these two are balanced, it just means that they are going to meet each other. So maybe that's not one of their concerns right now. I'm quite uncertain if this is going to be healthy for higher tier gameplay, as every tank will have infrared, and even the helicopters, and probably jets. However, I wouldn't worry too much about jets having them, as Gaijin states in the dev blog, the engines of aircraft and helicopters contrast well in the infrared spectrum. An air-cooled piston engine heats up to 300 degrees Celsius, and just above, jet engines create even more heat. This will allow anti-aircraft guns with thermal imaging equipment to detect targets at very long distances. So, I'm wondering if this will allow current SPAGs to lock on to aircraft at even larger distances, perhaps even sniping helicopters that are well beyond current radar ranges. Some of these small details that I really like about this is, for one, you can now turn off your tank engine to hide yourself from IR, but also this quote right here, in the game, the night vision feature will be displayed only in the crew positions in which they were provided in real in real ground vehicles or helicopters. Night vision night sights for gunners, commanders, drivers, and so on. So say that Panther with the night vision got put in the game, or if you could research that on the current Panthers, to use the night vision you can only use it through the commander sight. Or the Panther 2, when it gets its night vision sights, you will only be able to use them through the commander or the driver sights, not the gunner sight which would be very interesting for trying to shoot. Now I wonder if the thermals for boats will also be illuminated. How much effort did Gaijin put into this addition to the game? The next thing in the leak list that we can confirm is rank 7 helicopters. There was a dev blog for the Eurocopter Tiger. In fact, actually three of them. One for France, one for Germany, and a premium one for France that has a nice camo to it. The only reason why I could think of these being rank 7 helicopters is that their ordnance is extremely modern. The German one, the Tiger UHT, will have 
70 mm rockets, pretty standard. MG pods, all right. Hot 380 GMs, well, we, all right. Stingers and PARS 3LR missiles, which come from 2011 and are self-guided anti-tank missiles. It states on their Wikipedia page that the PARS-3LR will be able to fire in salvos up to 4 in 8 seconds. Now I believe I read somewhere by one of the forum staff that this will not be modeled in game, which is a bit of a disappointment and a relief to me. And unfortunately, I lost the quote. But even without that functionality, it's still gonna shake up Grand Forces a whole lot, being described in Wikipedia as a fire and forget missile. As for the French ones, they both have a 30 millimeter turret, rockets of undisclosed type, ATGM Hot 3s, and Marshall missiles. However, the rank 7 non-premium variant has Hellfires, while the Tiger HAP, which is premium, does not. Other words on rank 7 helicopters is that the British will not be getting one for some reason. They're getting a new tree, so you'd expect them to get the new tier of helicopter, but... All right, it's your choice, Gaijin. Next on the list of dev blogs was one for the Object 685. This is like the Object 906, but better. Has some pretty good speeds of 70 kilometers an hour forward, 21 backward, and 10 in the water. No armor, as you would expect with an amphibious tank. And is armed with a 100 millimeter 2A48 cannon that also has an auto-loading system in it. It can fire the same types of rounds as the Object 906, at least that's what the dev blog implies, but it can also fire APFSDS, or subcaliber, as they say. Pretty neat. It'll do the same thing as the Object 906 does, but at a higher battle rating. Probably be a pretty good backup for when your main medium tank dies, although there's always like a million medium tanks for you to put into a lineup at high tier Russia. The most important detail about this tank is actually the chassis, which found its way into the BMP-3 design. What I'm picking up from this is that we have almost guaranteed in the future, near future, that we will get the BMP-3. Then we got a dev blog for the USS Alana, a US light cruiser armed with 16 five inch guns. Since you can only really use 14 of them at a time, it'll probably come before the USS Brooklyn which has 1,552 millimeter guns. While the light cruiser line in the US tree is rather slim, I don't think exactly needed a new light cruiser as the current top one can easily outmatch just about any of the other ones. And I'm pretty sure this is really being added to slow down progression to the USS Brooklyn. We've seen them do that strategy in the past so it wouldn't be surprising then to do it now. Then there was a dev blog for the Supermarine Swift. Actually, two Supermarine Swifts, the F1 and the F7. Really, I'm just going to spend this time to uh, gloat that I called it. And it seems Gaijin is really uh, pampering that British ego, as apparently the plane has no cons. And the final dev blog to come out as of this recording is the Regina RE 2005, which did not actually come out in 2005. It's a Second World War prop plane. Yes, I know, they actually still exist. Gaijin makes them still. I'm very curious to see how this thing will perform in the field. However, I'm far too tired and bored to read the dev blog. I hate reading. A final dev blog that you probably also have already heard of, but I wasn't really able to fit into a category, perhaps I should have gone after or before night vision, is the map rotation filter. But here's the reason why it's the last, because it's the best thing of the patch. How it works is really simple. You get the option to mark dislike on three maps that you dislike, which is perfect if you say want to take out the T95 and definitely don't want Kursk or Sands of Sicily, but it gets even better if you're premium. You have the choice to ban a single map, making it so there's a guarantee you'll never show up there. The greatest part is that you could abuse this by getting a squad with four other premium friends and banning four separate maps that you all equally hate, and then each individually disliking three maps, making a lead to four banned ones and 12 disliked ones. I'm just happy I'll never have to play on Saipan again. I do have a unfortunate feeling that this may lead to people only playing on a few certain maps over and over again, which could be a good thing if it's a good map. However, in Battlefield 3, people only ever wanted to play on Metro for some stupid reason, and that was the worst map of all of them. On the other hand, Metro was still much more well designed than any of the garbage Gaijin puts out. So now that we got through all the dev blogs, let's see how well this leak list held up. There was a new mechanic, Night Vision, however that was released prior to this leak list. There was rank 7 helicopters, however that was 
also released prior to this leak list. For the US, this leak list claims a fighter, however that never came to be, and a light cruiser, which was announced prior to this list being announced. The USSR also claimed to be getting a fighter, an amphibious tank, and a light cruiser. We have not gotten a light cruiser yet, but we did get an amphibious tank, however that was again released prior to this list. The British claim to have two fighters, and if you count both of the Swifts that are coming, that fits the list perfectly. However, does not talk about the British heli tree. Although, on the other hand, the store team dude did confirm that all that we have seen for the British is everything the British are going to be getting. This list claims that Japan's going to get a self-propelled gun and a heavy cruiser, neither of which have come yet. Although, there was hinting towards some sort of Japanese naval vessel, or at least something Japanese, in the USS Atlanta dev blog. For Germany, this list claims a heavy cruiser and a helicopter. If you account the rank 7 helicopter, then they got it. However, that was announced prior to this. Although it does not speak of the German helicopter premium that you'll be able to buy with Golden Eagles that the store team dude had brought up on the forums. And if Germany's going to be getting a heavy cruiser, the one with the smallest guns is the Admiral Hepper class with 20.3 centimeter cannons. So I guess maybe that's going to shake a few things up in naval. Anyways, for Italy, they're claiming to get a medium tank, which we have not seen. A Spag, which we have not seen. We saw one fighter, however, it also claims a second fighter and two interceptors, neither of which we've seen. And for France, it is claimed to get a medium tank and a helicopter. But as I've said earlier, the helicopters were announced prior. And whatever important preliminary technique is, maybe that's the map rotation filter. But so far, this leak list has failed to name M48A2C, the Oswin 2, the British Helis, the French premium helicopter and the German premium helicopter. So I'm still quite on the edge of whether this leak list is legit or not. I'll let you make the determining factor on whether it is. A last few things I want to talk about. There was another quote from the store team dude saying that the G55S could be in the future available for Golden Eagles. Oh, and there was a Q&A, which was absolute garbage. Personally, I hate covering Q&As, especially Gaijin Q&As, because they are just full of junk. For example, the first question was just restating their dev blog about getting rid of the mouse and the other three fake vehicles. Not that the mouse is fake. And then there's just full of questions with extremely vague answers and puff questions that aren't even questions. And sometimes Gaijin answers the questions in the wrong way. I hope you can hear my chair squeak. Oh yeah, and here's the quote. I think I referenced this at the beginning of the video, but we would like to remind you once again, BR isn't a characteristic by which you can compare the effectiveness of the vehicle. Because ground vehicles and aircraft, what about helicopters and boats, with the same battle rating aren't necessarily equal to each other. But it simply means that they can meet each other in the same battles and will have a chance to win. Great. Just great, Gaijin. Fantastic answer. You get a good old star, go tell your mom. She'll definitely go put that up on the fridge. I didn't even tell you the actual question to that. It doesn't matter. This Q&A was dumb. Uh, maybe down further in the line it says that they're going to add the Pope Mobile to 6.7. It's going to have a 5 second reload or something like that. I don't care. I I'm not reading it. Y y I'm done with, with the Q&A. It's trash. Your Q&As are trash, Gaijin. I'm done with them. Done. I'll do future ones. Just not this one. Not this one. Go watch the Canadian guy. I think I'm done with this video. I think I covered all the points that I plan to cover. Uh, there might be some other things. If there are and you think they're important, you can hit me up down below in the comments or on my Discord. I do kind of want to make some more smaller videos to cover lesser subjects that can't really fit into this one. Hopefully doing things like that won't lead me to being stressed out for two days. So be sure to hit that bell icon to get notifications or anytime I upload anything. If you want to support the channel and help me not be stressed out, you can hit that join button and for five dollars a month you get early uploads some live stream icons so far i have at least one member and he's a pretty cool dude the royal rat thank you very much besides that uh live streams are happening saturday uh if there's a dev server this friday i'll definitely be doing that otherwise i'll probably just live stream xcom i've been trying to do that on twitch more often now and it's four in the morning this video is beyond late so i'm gonna go ahead to bed Oh yeah, and don't think I forgot bonus news. Tonight's bonus news is that the tier 3 I-185M27 at 3.7 has a SL income of 550%. That's over 5 
times 100 percent i don't know pg noob told me to tell you guys that i don't even know if that's impressive i don't pay attention to those same things typically if i want to farm sl i do it in arcade and just ground padding with the p47s you get a lot of sl doing that and it's easy because the games happen over and over again and when you don't get a ground pounding match you you're on a p47 you get what is it like 12 13 i don't know i don't know how to count anymore i'm it's four in the morning i'm going to bed